This is MSG. Well, I'd never really played music with that many people, really. Uh, you know, uh, there was a few bands I was in very briefly in high school and college, but uh, I think it was just, uh, you know, it was, uh, Walter was, you know, someone I, you know, I could la laugh with about the same things, because we had a lot of <clears throat> certain things in common. Yeah, we listened to the same jazz. That's That was the big bond, I think, between us, and we sort of had the same general ambition. My dad took me to a, a Steely Dan concert in 1993, which was the, the first year that they got back together and started touring again. And, you know, I really had no idea what I was getting into, but all of a sudden I started hearing all these songs uh, that I'd heard, you know, growing up. And um, I think by the end of that concert, I said to myself, this is my favorite band ever. These are my favorite songs ever. And I can't believe that this one band is responsible for uh, for all these songs that that were so you know so beautiful to me you know growing up, you know on one hand I guess you know we we did have a certain arrogance where we you know on, on some in some way we were sure that that uh, you know the album would be successful and that we would be hearing it on the radio and on the other hand the the reality was very shocking I think and was it Do It Again was that the first mm -hmm. uh, that's the first one I heard yeah I remember. You know, being very surprised to hear it on the radio. You know. you know, I'm lying in bed. You know, I haven't even spilled my coffee on myself yet. That's how I used to wake myself up. You know, and uh, Audrey brings the radio in. You know, and here it is. Um, I, and it was a real, a very fulfilling. It happened very fast moment. for us. Yeah. punk music came along, hypothetically, that was framed as the reaction to the kind of thing that we're doing. And uh, people have imagined, you know, that, that uh, because, because, probably because they became musicians uh, and they listened to our records and thought, oh, what the hell, what chord is that, you know? They didn't, didn't want to make records like that. They didn't, they thought that rock and roll should be crude and, and very elemental and... Uh, or just the sound of our records made them ill. It well, that could be too, a kind of an existential yeah, nausea seen, yeah. that uh, I've would noticed be, that, yeah. I mean, which is one of the effects we were frankly going for. Yeah. I think that people started following Steely Dan's lead in the mid 70s to the, to the late 70s. I think that Steely Dan unfairly gets lumped together with bands like the Eagles and Jackson Brown and kind of this California kind of laid back, smooth rock, uh, easy rock thing. And I think that's total bullshit. You know, the 80s was not a good decade for us, I have to say. You know, we, we mostly laid out in the 80s. Well, no, I mean, you know, we kind of ran out of, uh, 
ran out of steam there at the end of the 70s. And uh, no, we really didn't have any idea, you know. We, we thought, you know, probably we just, uh, you know, burned, down on that, burned out on that particular thing, you know. So uh, we figured there'd be a little bit more money, you know. They'd keep sending the money for a while, but not too long. And not as much as they kept sending the money. And, uh, you know, uh, so we didn't have to get real jobs or anything like that, you know. We were just kind of... For, for a few years, anyway. Hanging around, hanging around. And eventually, what were we going to do, you know? Join one of the other big jazz rock bands from the 70s, you know? I mean... It was kind of inevitable. Yes it was something? sort of inevitable, really, although we didn't know it at the time. That chord, right? Someone not playing uh, uh, this D7 uh, with a flat uh, D7 flat five here. Most of the music that was being produced when we started uh, releasing albums was, was very earnest, you know, and uh, so I think maybe uh, it took people a while to, to fi they were, figure it out. There were there was a few groups that uh, were funny. There are you know, a lot of songwriters that have followed in that tradition of, uh, you know, being witty and being, uh, and being funny and being sly in their lyrics. But I think a lot of that falls flat. I think the, that a lot of the, the, the funny stuff, a lot of the sardonic and sly and ironic stuff comes from, comes from Walter, from, from Walter's writing. Um, and then Having that filter through Donald, it just takes it to a whole nother level. There were but funny names then, though. Uh, but the in music the, in wasn't the 70s. funny. The music wasn't funny. But the and names were funny. Some of them. Yeah, I suppose that's I mean, true. Uh, Lothar and the Hand People was funny. Or fog Hat. What the or hell is that? Uh, What's a Fog Hat? You know. But Cat, I think Cat Mother and the All Night Newsboys <laughs> is funny. <laughs> that was a good one. 